Hello and welcome to this third session on powder metallurgy. Student friends, in session one we discussed about the introductory aspects of powder metallurgy in which we covered why powder metallurgy, the importance of powder metallurgy, the process advantages, process limitations and as well as applications of powder metallurgy. And in session two, uh, we discussed about basic aspects of powder metallurgy. Today is the session number three on powder metallurgy and this session would like to cover powder characteristics. So, there are two aspects, one is powder manufacturing and second one is powder processing for uh, manufacturing uh, required product. So, in that the powder characteristics, let us discuss it, which affects the final product. In that particle size, shape and distribution is also very crucial, how it affects that we are going to understand. Powder manufacturing techniques are there, various powder manufacturing techniques and the technique which is suitable for a particular material uh, enhances its quality as well as exclusiveness. The, after that, we are going to understand about application of powder fabrication techniques. So, the lesson objectives as I mentioned in the uh, this outline of presentation to learn and understand all these aspects, powder characteristics, its particle size, shape and distribution, various powder manufacturing techniques and then the different uh, characteristics of fabricated metal powders and lastly to understand the applications of powder fabrication techniques. So, now basically let us understand what what do we mean by a powder? A powder can be defined as a finely divided particulate solid. So, various geometric features are there of the powder. One is particle size, then its distribution, particle shape and internal structure and surface area. These are influencing factors. Now, to elaborate more on this, if you see the metal powder characteristics which are very crucial as an input for that product. One is chemical composition of a structure that gives me a desired property, its structure, particle size and shape, particle surface topography plays a crucial role, surface area of a powder, particle apparent density and tap density, the flow rate, then compressibility the green strength of a powder particle and then pyrophorosity and toxicity. These are factors during processing. These are crucial characteristics of the powder which must be confirmed prior when we deploy powder for that particular processing. Now, in this powders and particles, so powder is nothing but a collection of finely dispersed solid particles. Now, the size matters normally as per the requirement of a process, but it is normally in the range of 100 mic micrometer. So, the particle size of powders used in powder metallurgy which ranges from a 0 0.1 to 100 micron. The size and shape if the examples are given there, tantalum flakes of uh, 50 micron width, then silicon nitride uh, agglomerate is shown in the uh, slide which is having a 2 micron, micron spheres, stainless steel spheres are of uh, 20 micron and uh, iron irregular particles are there when you use a mechanical method or any other uh, method which produces irregular particles, they are of the size of 100 microns. So, powder characteristics which are relevant to powder processing as we know, particle size and its distribution, particle agglomeration plays an important role while compacting, surface area of particle, then inter-particle friction also plays a very crucial role, 
particle flow and its packing, crystal structure of the particle, composition, homogeneity, even contamination that is pyrophoricity and toxicity which needs to be understood. So, these characteristics must be measured, quantified for what? The objective is to optimize powder fabrication process. The, desire, the very success of a process depends upon the quality of a powder that we are producing. So, after that select the best route and then carry out further powder processing technique. That is uh, the compaction, then sintering and then finishing of a product. And the success of this entire powder metallurgy process for a particular product, it depends upon the quality of a powder that you are generating. So, today we are going to understand this particular aspect. So, if you see in this slide, the particle size and shape, these particles when we uh, produce it, finely uh, dispersed, you know, solid particles, the size and shape, it influences packing, then it influences flow and it influences compressibility of the powder. So, here the various sizes and shapes, shapes spher spherical, flake, rounded irregular and then irregular shapes. And then we have a various uh, sizes here, spherical, angular shapes, rounded, then cubic, then again uh, cylindrical, irregular flakes, fibrous, then polygonal, dendritic. So, these characteristic dimensions of a particle, they are dependent upon the shape of the particle and that is why the particle size and shape plays a very crucial role in powder metallurgy. So, particle size is again having, it is based on characteristic length of the projected particle and then diameter of an equivalent sphere of the same. So, here it is shown their possible size measures are projected height h, w as projected width and m as maximum chord length. So, this gives me equivalent spherical diameter. So, particle size as I said finely divided uh, particles are necessary in powder metallurgy that is why particle size is an important shape. Then particle shape again they are main particle uh, shape factor and aspect ratio though that should be assessed because that shape gives me whether it is going to fulfill the packing, flowability, compressibility and that is why a particular shape is necessary for a particular product to get conformed to that uh, quality. That is why the shape factor is defined as the particle surface area divided by surface area of the same volume. And then the aspect ratio is linear dimensions of the projected particle and equivalent diameters of the projected particle. So, diameter of outer embracing circle uh, to the ratio of that to the diameter of circle with equal projected area. So, particle shape also plays a crucial role and then particle size distribution. So, what is that? The analysis is carried out uh, the 75 to 90 micrometer range. So, what is that screen analysis is carried out? The median in this case is again a 72 micron shown there. So, the variation of particle size in a powder is known is, is assessed with the help of distribution function and these distribution function gives me the whether there is a uniformity in the particle sizes. If, if the irregular particles are there in that, uh, uh, you know, that necessary and required properties will not be fulfilled. That is why. So, types of particle distributions are available here. So, they, that gives me one is polydisperse broad, then monodisperse is shown there as well as bimodial. So, frequency against a log size when you plot a graph, we get a Gaussian log normal that is what is expected and that gives me a very good, you know, uh, particle for process. Otherwise, if there are polydispersed, that means the broad, then again uh, monodisperse is there, very narrow and then again bimodial. So, various types of distributions, they give me 
idea about the, whether the required uh, uniformity of the particle size shape is available or not that place. So, now after understanding this size shape and its distribution powder fabrication. So, powder is processed or powder is produced you can produce it by using many techniques. So, the techniques available one is mechanical techniques are there, then chemical synthesis, electrolytic deposition is there, then liquid atomization is there and also vapor condensation technique is deployed. So, each method is having its own unique feature as well as limitation. So, energy efficiency is also an important thing while producing this powder particle. So, the selection of a particular method it is dependent upon a criteria that is type and properties of the metal that you need, reactivity of the metal, then desired characteristic of the uh, powder produced and the production cost is also. So, the rate of production and the cost per kg that plays a very important role. So, powder is again having a influential characteristic like its particle size, shape and its distribution. So, when you use select a particular powder manufacturing technique, the criteria for there are many techniques available as I mentioned in this uh, slide, uh, mechanical, chemical, electrolytic, liquid atomization, vapor condensation, but a selection of a particular technique depends upon the selection criteria that is type and properties of the metal, reactivity of the metal, we cannot use it in chemical, desired characteristic after getting that property, uh, metal uh, powder produced and the rate of production as well as the cost of production. So, various uh, uh, methods we deploy there, selection depends again on the criteria as discussed. So, powder production method, machining is used. So, machining which gives me a bulk uh, materials are processed there and uh, the chips or the particles uh, in size they are quite large. Another process used is impaction process, load is applied and uh, that disintegrates the bulk material, but again the size or particles produced are in large, the si in size they are large. Another technique is attritioning by uh, uh, it involves grinding the material with another harder material. So, now here the size of material is in the range of our powder metallurgy requirement that is in the range of 1 to 100 mm size range produce fine particles you can produce it and compression is another one that gives me again production of a fine particle. So, machining or mechanical uh, methods of machining right from a very big particle to a very small particle size various methods we can use machining is one in that no doubt machining is a metal cutting process is deployed there no doubt the cost is less but at the same time the size of a particle is comparatively large. Impaction process is one, a load is applied crushing the component there. So, milling process is uh, deployed there for that, fracture a particular material by using collision and then that gives me fast rotation or a slow rotation options are there and that gives me the crushing system that uh, which is used shown here is a cylindrical drum filled with balls or rods and then the drum rotates and we can have a slow rotation or a faster rotation and then that collision with those harder balls gives me the required size of particles. Then electrolytic production of a powder is another method of powder production. This is used to produce high purity metal powders. So, here the application includes basic metals like iron, copper, aluminum, chromium, zinc and magnesium they are processed. Even precision methods like uh, metals like niobium, tantalum, silver they are processed with this electrolytic production and then reactive metals titanium and palladium they are processed. So, here the electro deposition of a metal in, in a spongy or a powdery state is deployed and that gives me a very good 
you know uh, deposition of the particles so atomization is technique used physical method gas atomization water atomization cryogenic liquid atomization as well as centrifugal atomization so these are physical methods for converting that solid uh, part into a particulate uh, matter and uh, each one is having its own feature gas and water atomizations are used and it gives uh, fine particles to a limited range but again centrifugal and cryogenic liquid atomization fulfills my requirement of production of a particle of a particular size which are suitable for my purpose now here the characteristics of fabricated metal powders are known so powder the first column gives me the material molybdenum niobium nickel and then uh, reactive metals are also so shown there then stainless steel tantalum titanium all these are materials process used for metal so the oxide reduced hydride mill hydromate carbonyl then water atomized air atomized gas atomized so if you see there stainless steel gas atomized process is employed then for uh, lead you know water atomized process is employed tin air atomized process is employed tool steel water atomized process is employed so and uh, the tungsten and cobalt attritor milled method is deployed so the shapes which are produced by using these uh, you know techniques are examples third column it gives me uh, for example stainless steel when gas atomized technique is employed gives me a spherical shape with uh, apparent density number given there 12 and then uh, the oxygen parts per million proportion is shown apparent density uh, grams per per cubic centimeter is shown tap density is also given there and the flow time is is mentioned there so the rate of that is also very crucial so all these you know parameters are very crucial which gives me you know viability of a particular process and that's why the process which is used then the shape that is generated then the density in uh, the size of the particles that you are producing it and then the oxygen parts per million then apparent density then the tap density and the flow time so these are the parameters they define the capability of a particular powder production method so that you can select a particular method and which fulfills the requirement another uh, criteria that we discussed is the cost of a production of a powder so various techniques fabrication route for producing powder it is mentioned here various techniques are there carbonyl decomposition centrifugal atomization electrolytic deposition then again uh, gas atomization then hydrothermal mechanical alloying milling plasma atomization is there vapor condensation is there water atomization is there so the cost range is uh, given here water atomization cost per kg dollar in, in dollar for uh, uh, understanding it uh, to for the uniform in understanding this uh, cost implication for water water atomization one to two dollar per kg for plasma atomization it is six to forty dollars per kg it depends upon type of material that you are processing mechanical alloying 10 to 40 dollar that's the range per kg so this gives me idea about the fabrication route i am selecting it and its cost implications per kg it's a very important criteria one must take into account while selecting a fabrication route applications of powder fabrication technique now uh, material wise the data is given material for alloy steel or tool steel common methods employed are which are feasible both technologically and economically water atomization gas atomization centrifugal atomization then aluminium air atomization gas atomization copper various you we can use a lot of methods there which are viable and then for gold electrolytic air atomization chemical precipitation so the material wise 
the standard data is available so that we can select a particular technique which is both technologically and economically viable for production of a best powder particles which are required for a quality production. So, coming to after understanding all the aspects relating to the powder manufacturing, we understood the powder characteristics which affect the powder metallurgy process and after that we understood about the various techniques of powder, uh, we, uh, how those size, shape and distribution of uh, particle you know affect the process and after that we understood the various different types of processes which are available for manufacturing the powder fabrication and the selection of a particular you know a technique is it is dependent on uh, many criterions that thing we understood and now let us take one quiz whether we precisely understood this subject matter or not the question first question is process of forming metal powder by directing molten metal through an orifice after which it is break into small particle using high pressure fluid is known as so, there are four options given, first one is atomization, second one is reduction, then third one is crushing and fourth one is electrolysis. The answer is A because uh, it is process is atomization, atomization is nothing but disintegration of a molten metal into particles by rapidly moving gas or liquid stream or by other means we can use again the other means also is known as atomization. So, the first one is answer is A that is atomization. The second question is formation of metal powder to use in powder metallurgy by reducing some compound with CO or other molecule is known as four options are given atomization is one B reduction, C crushing and D is electrolysis. The answer here is again reduction because explanation is reduction is the process of formation of metal powder to use in powder metallurgy by reducing uh, some compound with CO or with some other reducing H. So, answer is reduction. So, that is all as far as this powder uh, manufacturing technique is concerned. Thank you all.